This is my randomology, and I can already feel my soul hurting. So the second one, I didn't actually see again until I did the recording last time. I saw it in theaters and that was kind of it. This one, I bought when it came out on DVD because I kept thinking, is it me? Is it me? Am I, am I just not getting this? Is there something here that is eluding me? And after watching the second one again, I can say with complete confidence, no. No, it's not me. It's very much not me. This was not my fault. Short version, if you haven't seen my reaction to Matrix Reloaded, it is a overbloated attempt to try to capture what made the first one good. And it does not work at all. There are a couple of good things here and there. I'll be honest in that regard, but... <sighs> Well, let's go ahead and finish off November. I, I, I still wish I'd come up with that, but that was my wife who did so. Uh, if you like what you're watching, go ahead and go to Patreon and subscribe, support the channel. Um, because quite frankly, if I have to watch more movies like this, I'm going to start running out of money because this is not cheap. <sighs> no. No, no, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. You know what hurts really the most? These movies could have been so good. Like, legitimately good. Everything that was set up. And then... Okay, now I'm ready. The things I do for the YouTube algorithm. I'm just hurting myself. I am. Don't know what that is. I'm also wondering about a doctor just blatantly talking about another patient in front of somebody else. This is what keeps bothering me. What? Well, what bothers me is this whole movie. I bring word from the Oracle. You must come at once. To where? Where do we meet? Like, what's the... You know, <sighs> uh. Again, I, I know the real life reason why she looks like this is because the original actress passed away. In the story, they never really explain why, just that she's in a new shell or a new body or something like that, like just what regenerated like the doctor, but why? I don't need sleep, I need answers. I expect just what I've always expected, for you to make up your own damn mind, believe me or don't. And all yet the whole point of the previous movie is that there really isn't a choice, it's all been done, predestination. I've never heard a program speak of love. It does beg the question why a program designed to just no, it is a run a machine is sapient is and would word have emotions and is this complex? I see that you are in love. Yeah, again, just more and stuff that doesn't actually make any sense or get really explained. A way of saying what I am here to do. Again, it's just the way it is. You really have no say in it. This is actually kind of funny. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> uh, and here comes one of the most pointless scenes in science fiction history. Now, I know in the last one they said that the people working for the Merovingian are old programs. You know, the last one showed, I guess, I guess there were ghosts and werewolves. What are these guys? In fact, what are any of them? This movie is two hours and 20 minutes long, and it has time for this. Apparently. 
how does being upside down help them exactly? Like, I, I realize I'm, I'm not, you know, a black belt in martial arts. I am not a trained soldier, and yet I can't help but think that uh, this is really supposed to just kind of look cool, but it doesn't. I do hope, however, she has the good manners to learn her lesson and to remember that there is no action without consequence. Again, what exactly is the consequence of her looking different now? This, of course, I know. Which is my business to know. Nobody is this French. You want to know how much I just want this scene to end? Monica Bellucci is sitting there in that outfit, and I still want the scene to end. I mean, it's, it's way shorter than the other scenes that he was in in the last movie, so there's that. Is calling him Merv is actually another funny little gag. Oh look, they caught Keanu Reeves talking about, you know, being in this movie and trying to get out of his contract. What exactly is the point of showing that he can be in the Matrix without actually jacking into the Matrix? Like, it's interesting, it's fascinating, but what exactly did this do besides just kind of set up a little action scene and... What? What? Where is this going? Where does it end? Well, it's gonna be one more movie I'm like this. Uh, it's gonna be a custom anime, I'm which I think actually came out before this, I'm and then it's gonna be about uh, 16 years before the fourth part, which hopefully it doesn't, matter. doesn't blow. Your your Well, the, the equation trying to balance itself out just by itself. I mean, it's, nobody brought him back, it seems. Also, this movie has a weird conflict. Like, we're supposed to be worried about the machines coming to attack Zion, but at the same time, we've got Smith, who is just kind of there. Like, he just is. And then this whole thing with Bane really just kind of serves to you know create a little bit of conflict on the trip to uh the machine city oh i'm not so bad once you get to know me that was a little jack nicholson the way he said that <laughs> there's something off about the way he's laughing it's it's just it's it's just off Why they didn't lock him up in a room is beyond me. There was a video game that came out around the same time as the second movie that told the story of Niobe and Ghost and kind of served as a parallel story and it explained a lot of stuff that happened like the power plant heist and what happened to them there, the chase, which interesting but it does mean that the second movie doesn't really make sense until you go out and play the video game who the hell are you you're a volunteer sir do you have a name aside from just the boy hi you're gonna open with hi just he really does do a really good agent smith impression seriously why is he not under watch like this is this is one of the stupidest parts of the movie, honestly. I mean, they got a guy who you think may have sabotaged, you know, one of the EMPs, and you just leave him alone with the doctor, like not under guard, not restrained. He's clearly not thinking correctly. I think I'm realizing one of the other things that uh, bugs me about this is that their romance is very, very much like Anakin and Padme. It's just kind of there. It just sort of happens. Even at the very end of the first movie, I think I commented something like, you know, I, I know this is supposed to be an inversion of the uh, the the prince and the princess motif, but it, it just feels, it doesn't even feel forced. It just feels like, uh. We're ready, sir. About damn time. And nobody's checking on Bane. Nobody's right, checking on the prisoner. And yet, you didn't put a guard on him, you didn't put him in a room, you didn't restrain him. Ah. 
You know, this whole thing with, like, agents being able to, like, go into people, even if it's just Smith, it's... It's such an incredible switch. Like, they have to fight them in the real world. It sets up a sense of paranoia. Like, the agents could be in the real world now. And... It only gets used once, and it gets used... In, again, like, there's so many reasons they should have, like, just... Put Bane in a room and locked him in, and they don't. Yeah, we're not even dealing with subtext at this point. This is like meta text or paratext. Hey, whatever subtlety we had before, it's just we're, we didn't even throw it out the window. We just I actually don't know what the other part of that would be, but yeah. Why don't they have an EMP? Like, that's another thing that never made sense. Like, why don't they have one of these things in the dock at all times? Okay, and I know possible answer is that they can't build a new one. Like, it's just all the stuff that they've been salvaging. But they've built other stuff. Like, I gotta stop trying to make sense of this. I'm just hurting myself. To give these bastards our lives, we give them hell before we do <laughs> That's not as motivating as you think it is. Like, we're gonna die anyway, so go out kicking and screaming, boys! Hi, new character! Why aren't they at their stations? I will admit, the chase sequence uh, of them with, in the tunnels with the settles is actually kind of cool. Probably the, the only negative thing I can say really about it is that there's so much happening at the screens so quickly that it's actually a little hard to make out what's going on so a lot of the effects get lost in the in the storm of things not that you can't see it it's just like there, there's parts where I wish you could see more on a purely technical level this scene is incredible the amount of processing power they needed just to render all this stuff and I think some of it might actually be miniature work. Uh, it's it's impressive on a technical level. It is very, very impressive. I would argue, however, that all that firing of that tiny little spot might also just be making the hole bigger. Something that does make the, the action of the scene a little difficult to follow as well and just makes it feel uh, a little less uh, visually appealing is that it is so monochromatic. Like, the only way to really tell, like, what's going on is just light and shadow. Like, the sentinels are gray with a tiny little bit of red. The suits are gray. I also question how long they, they can go on, like, one of these reloads, because those bullets are freaking huge. Like, and as fast as they're firing, I would think they'd go through one of those boxes in, like, two seconds. Oh no, not Zuka! You guys, they killed Zuka! In the arms of the angel, like, if that effect had uh, been put together this year, it would still be impressive. Again, using a little bit of miniature work to uh, really sell the scene, practical effects, sets, things like that. I want that. Take this. I'm not entirely sure the one-liner really works here. See, I'm actually more invested in this chase than I am in the dock fight. I see. There's a couple shots here where you can actually like follow the action, tell what's going on. They're longer shots. Uh, they're, those are pretty cool. But then there's a couple of shots like this, for example, where there's so much just kind of flying at the screen that things get a little bit lost. This character too, what was it? Shara? Kara? Something like that? Like, total Vasquez badass. I like the scenes with these two. I really wish that we'd been introduced to her, even in the first movie, even if, even if she'd had one scene where we saw these two interacting so they could really sell the relationship and we could feel something when she dies 
but they don't. I get it, it's and it's such a t like just just a little bit more. That's not one of ours. It can't be. That's a mechanical line. No one can fight with mechanical. <laughs> That's a good cut, like, just to, like, her face of, like, what the fuck am I doing? Come on, keep up. Try. <laughs> it is also kind of nice to see Morpheus just kind of a little bit out of his depth after being just so sanctimonious over the last two movies. Sir, holographic confirms. It's the hammer, sir. Can no one say Mjolnir? Is it that hard of a word to say? Sustaining heavy damage. See, the shots where you actually get to hold on and see just the damage, the electricity, all that stuff, like, that's cool. That is really cool. I, I think if I remember the special features on the DVD, like, that thing, the, the giant sentinel tentacle, uh, I think the special effects team called it the Hand of God. That's freaking epic. I don't care who you are. What are we fighting? The Hand of God? Something else that would have really made this a lot more epic, like, is if we'd been introduced to these characters earlier. Like, if they were characters that we'd seen even in the second movie and had had some interaction with them. Maybe not some interaction. I think that... Because that, that, we have some interaction with a lot of these characters. If we'd been introduced to them and just gotten to know them a little bit more. If we had... Yeah. Yeah, as fast as those things fire, that cannot be that many rounds. Like, it's got to be like five, six seconds and you're out. Well, that was very nice of the Sentinels to just kind of rip him apart, but leave all the hardware intact. How do you aim those guns? Like, you can't look down a reticle or anything. There's nothing in front of you to tell you exactly where the gun is pointing you got to you're basically shooting from the hip mm. you know for being a matrix movie this movie has surprisingly little matrix in it oh mcdonald had a farm e-i-e-i-o and on this farm he had some uh I didn't think far enough along to actually make up a line. That was pointless, I'm sorry. No, oh, she won't, she's gonna be back for the fourth one. Which begs the question, how? I have a theory that the machines actually end up grabbing her after Neo leaves and plug her in or try to save her or something. Or maybe the Trinity in the new movie is just kind of like a ghost, like an echo that he creates. That's possible too. I have questions. I just hope I'm not supremely disappointed. This is a, this is a good acting from Carrie on Moss. Uh, even Keanu Reeves with you know no eyes is doing a pretty good job. The, again, a, a lot of the complaints I have about this movie is that it didn't do, it didn't go far enough with certain things. Like their relationship felt forced, even in the first movie, and this could be a heartbreaking scene if I believed in the relationship a little bit more. And now that we know she's going to be coming back in the fourth movie, it might actually cheapen this whole scene if... I don't know. I have concerns with the new movie, but, you know, I, I'm not going to say anything until I actually see it. That is way creepier than it needs to be. That is way creepier than it needs to be. I always did wonder why did they decide to make the uh, the Deus Ex Machina here, and that's actually its name, uh, a baby. Yes, the great metaphysical battle of choice, free will, compliance, the world that's been pulled over your eyes, all will be brought to a head in a fist fight. I, it's it's the most outlandish part of the movie, but I think this is where it actually goes into full-on superhero mode. I, this came out way before uh, Man of Steel, which I know people have a lot of issues with, uh, narrative-wise. But I think that last fight with Zod is one of the best superhero fights 
I'd seen in a long time because it really captures just how destructive it could be. And I think this one, uh, this fight sequence right here, kind of laid the groundwork for it. Uh, because there's, there's a few places where the, the live action choreography doesn't quite match the CGI choreography, but it really highlights just how inhumanly powerful these two are. Also, apparently I have to redub all their lines in this uh, this part because the water keep going into their mouths and they could not speak properly. And Smith disappears. And Neo disappears. And do we get a big blast? Now nah, they just kind of start punching each other. Like, not even like a boom when they do that. Soundtrack aside, one of the things that makes this fight also really, really cool is that it continues to escalate until there's just a breakdown. Uh, they start off at just a, literally a street fight, then they take to the air, throw each other into a building, and it just keeps escalating bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, which makes for a really interesting fight. Like, things keep changing. They, they, they have to keep adapting to new situations. Um, it's so much better than a lot of the other fights. I mean, not only because the soundtrack is also absolutely epic. Like, you do anything listening to this song, like, you're going to set something on fire. Having it rain as they're fighting is actually pretty brilliant because they get to really showcase just how freaking fast they're moving. Like, there's certain points where they're moving so fast they actually outrun the rain. I mean, there's absolutely zero consistency in this. So, you know, at one point, they're just kind of kicking each other, and it's like a normal fight uh, you know, with some wire foo. And another one, they're basically hitting each other at nuclear bomb speeds. And... Which... Again, it's, it's not consistent. It looks cool, but... Why, Mr. Anderson? Why? Why do you persist? Uh, uh, a wonderful line if we hadn't just spent two movies talking about how there really is no choice. Alright, one Smith down, six and a half billion to go. So really, the whole conflict between these two really boils down to the Oracle planting herself and the Neo recognizing that phrase and allowing himself to be absorbed and... I'm sorry, what, again, what is the choice that is actually being made here? Because this movie just spent two films telling me there really is no choice to be made. Is it over? So... What? Like, what was wrong with telling him, you gotta let him possess you so that we can actually get in there and tear this thing apart from the inside? Yeah, nothing symbolic going on there. I felt a disturbance, as though a billion smiths cried out, and then were silenced. Yeah, between the cross light on his chest and then this line right now, like, we just... It is done. Yeah, we just threw all subtlety out the window. Not that there was a lot of subtlety left, but... And I could swear that some of the, the lights in the background are green. Like some of the, some of the, yeah, like there's a couple of lights back there that look green. And if I remember from the Animatrix, the ones that are green are not being controlled or they're not allied with the machines. They're like human allied machines or human sympathetic machines. that was going on 10 minutes ago how do they know this is not just a soldier that completely is off his nut and there's a hundred thousand sentinels uh, heading their way because honestly without knowing exactly what neo was doing and all this other stuff it really does look like that yeah like i could swear that some of the lights in the back are green yeah this one right here definitely this one is green 
Yeah, there's a couple over there on the right, uh, a couple more over there on the left, bottom left. Oh, god damn it, I forgot this jackass was in this final scene. <sighs> all right, let's talk about it. You know, in all honesty, the third movie is not as bad as the second one. There's 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 a lot more stuff that I think worked more in relation to the action pieces, the the long drawn out exposition was not as present. There, there's still a lot of places in, uh, where I think this thing could have just been cut down easily, like 20 or 30 minutes. Um, the themes of uh, free will and choice, which is, again, like this movie is very muddled about what it, it's trying to say. Like it, it, the first one set up this idea of, you know, breaking away from the system. And then the second one set up the idea of this is all prophecy. It's all been predetermined, which I know I, I get it. I, I know I'm already going to, I can hear somebody in the comments already say, well, that's the whole point. They think they're free, but they're not. Yeah, but the ultimate solution to all this was to stick with predestination to a plan, to not being told what exactly is going on so that you are an, still a victim of a system in order to keep the plan moving. It... I don't know. I, I still am not entirely sure how they're going to bring Trinity back for the fourth movie. I, I'm, I'm very curious about it. And, you know, given her death, given that it was the big, emo well, one of the big emotional points in this movie, I'm, I'm worried that bringing her back is going to cheapen it. I have a theory that maybe the machines rescued her and she's just kind of been stuck in the Matrix kind of in limbo. Or it could be that she's not even there, that she's really just like this figment that Neo has created, which would be heartbreaking. Um, but... Yeah, we're that's it for this one. Uh, I might, might do the Animatrix at some point, uh, but I need a Matrix break. This was exhausting. First one's a classic. The second one is intolerable. This one is slightly better, but there's still so much that could have been done differently that could have improved this so much. So. Thank you very much for watching. If you like what you saw, go ahead and go down to Patreon, sign up, become a patron, tell me what to watch next, make suggestions, or just go ahead and subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, and until then, I will see you next time.